You're watching the Maryland Players Show. So my special guest today, man, this is my guy right here. You know, city championship at Dunbar High School, all Met Player of the Year in 1991. Anybody that's from this neighborhood know how hard that is to do. A four-year starter at University of Maryland. 1,743 points. That's good for top 10 in Maryland's history. 704 rebounds, 15th in Maryland history, uh, best ever for a guard. Uh, 437 assists, uh, top 10 again in assists, best ever for a non-point guard. Now here's the crazy number though. All time steal leader in University of Maryland's history and the ACC with 344 steals, uh, number 11 in NCAA mm -hmm. history. Uh, in his senior year, averaged 3.7 steals per game, average. You know, had a couple of, had, uh, had some games where he had at least seven steals multiple times. Uh, Two-time All-ACC second team, All-ACC All-Freshman. Only player in ACC history with at least 1,700 points, 700 rebounds, 400 assists, and 300 steals, only player. Two Sweet 16 and three NCAA appearances. Uh, your year started a string of 11, 11 consecutive uh, NCAA appearances from 1994 to 2004. Uh, your reign was from 1994 to 97. Uh, your Turk team finished in the top 10 for the first time since 1980 at the time. Uh, played professionally in Italy, Taiwan, and with the Harlem Globetrotters. Welcome to the show, my man, Johnny Rhodes. <laughs> the intro is, is, is unbelievable, and I appreciate you you guys having me on the show. Thank you so much, Mr. Wizard. Ah, man, that's work right there. So let's start off with this. So you're from D.C., right? That's correct. What was it like growing up in the, in the southeast area of D.C. as a kid? Oh man, um, in, in my era coming up in the city, you know, this uh, Washington DC was was the Myrtle capital of, of the United States, man. It, it was, uh, you know, that's when the crack era had just started. It was it was really, really bad out here on the street. So um, I, I, I was just really, really fortunate that the basketball ended up coming my way. They gave me an outlet and, and just to be a part of something special in, in basketball teams. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so when did your love of basketball? When did that begin? How how did that come about? Well, well, man. Believe it or not, my my first love was riding bicycles, man. And uh -huh. I had I had some of my some of my uncles in the neighborhood say, "Look here, man. You too tall to be riding a bike, man." <laughs> you know where where I came from on Elvis Road, man. We we played on monkey bars, so we didn't even have basketball courts. Yeah. And, uh, you know, what, what ended up happening was, man, they got me off the bicycle and, and brought me into the gym. Um, believe it or not, I played one game in elementary school and I outscored everybody. And the coach said, damn, son, where the hell you been? <laughs> and that was the intro for, for my, my basketball uh, path in, in, in my life, man. So I ended up really starting out playing junior high school. You know what? That's funny you say your first love was bicycles because I remember in the, in the neighborhood we used to be popping wheelies like crazy on the bikes, yes. and, and I was pretty good at it too. You know, I'm I used to ride the whole block, man. We, we, we were creative, man. We wanted to bunny hop and, and and do all kinds of things with the bikes, take them apart, put them back together. Yes, but sir. like I said, man, it it was just uh, it was a great opportunity for me to you know obviously you know, just get get the love of basketball early and then just have a passion to to want to be a part of a team, which ultimately, you know, kept me off the streets, man. Right. So, look, uh, at Dunbar High School, you play with my guy, Short Dog, you know, Romeo. And, yes, uh, yeah. Donald Ford. I mean, Donald Ford was incredible. I remember we used to play uh, in the summertime, we used to play pickup games in Mackin. Right. Um, um, uh, uh, um, and he was he was just unbelievable, man. It was some some stiff competition there, and uh, oh, yeah, I remember man. I remember him for sure. He was a straight baller. So in that in the high league during that time, you know, with that type of competition, what kind of impact did that have on on the growth of your game? You know, 
when you know, you, like you said, well, man, PG County and, and Washington D.C., man, at that era and that time, that was the best basketball in the nation, man. I mean, you had to bring it all throughout the inner high as well as out, out on your side of the town. You had to bring it because guys were playing. And I mean, believe it or not, man, it, it, it was so competitive that, you know, you had no other choice but to do better and, and be, be better. You know, I think for me, my experience in coming up when I was in junior high school, I was able to play with with some guys that were in high school all americans you know so that really paved the way for me when i got back down to junior high school i was killing so it, it, it was just it was just you know like i said just being around the older guys and, and just the competitiveness man you couldn't you couldn't take a night off in the end of high at all so you you definitely had to bring the a game and you know just to be a part of a winning team um that always helps and, and it, it just grew so, so ultimately, you had a very successful high school career, and now it's college time. Why, why, why did you choose the University of Maryland? Well, let's let's go back. Um, let's talk about that gentleman right behind you that wears it. They used to wear the number thirty-four, and then let's talk about this guy right here that's interviewing me, number forty-two. <laughs> so, these two guys had the biggest impact on my decision to come to University of Maryland. It was a no-brainer. You know, I, I, I watched the high flying Walt, Walt Williams. I watched the high flying Lynn Bias. You know, um, Dunbar was an up tempo pressing type of team. Merlin was an up type of pressing, you know, kind of team. So it, it was a no brainer. And at the time, I get a chance to come to stay home. You know, yeah. a lot of people don't know this, Walt, that you and I were supposed to play one year together. I know, man. Yeah, and and I, I, I didn't even know that until I started. I, I was like, wait a minute, Johnny yeah. was a senior. Ninety-one. He went to the prep school. Oh my goodness! That's he right. We, we, together. We, we were supposed to have got it in one year, but unfortunately, I dropped the ball, man. And I, I, I'm sorry for that, man, because we would have definitely That's made up, some man. noise, man. But it, it, it was just one of those things, Walt, man. That uh, I mean, it, it, it would have been so nice to have played with you, man. And obviously, you you impacted my life on so many levels. Um, you know, just embracing me as as a young guy coming to the University of Maryland. And, and, you know, just being around Kevin McClinton and, and all of the guys, man. So, you know, you made me feel right at home. So when it was time to sign that dotted line, I already knew what I was walking into. So it, it was it was real nice, man. And I just want to say thank you so much, man, for you being a big brother to guys like myself that came up under you, man. And you know what, Johnny? I remember it, when you was in high school, man. I, I never let high school dudes hang with us, but... You and Simpkins, man. You, I, you dudes used to come around, and it was all it was all love, man. I uh, really enjoy hanging with you guys. You know, you Simp and X We Hip all came at the same time. Yeah. You know, so that I know that was cool right there. So look, when I played right, um, my senior year, you know, people just always talked about you know the way I scored the basketball and things like that, and rightfully so. I had a lot of records in terms of scoring, but the one thing I took the most pride in was I was the all-time steal leader in Maryland's history when I left. And I, I think I had like 175, 180 steals, right? So then I look back and I see you playing and dude, I think it was like by the time before your sophomore year ended, you had already passed me. And I was like, what is going on out there? You know, that, it was just incredible to see you steal the ball, your instincts. Um, your, the way you anticipate it. Is, is, that, is that something that kind of evolved when you were at Maryland or did you always, did you always have those instincts like you that? Know, that you, you know, well, well, I, I, think, I think that just comes from the IQ, man. I, I, wanted, I wanted the offenders to think, man. You know, yeah, it's yeah. like, what would happen if I got in the passing lane right here? I'm, I wanted to be the disruptor. You know what I'm saying? So I'm going to make the offense think about it, you know? And, right. and that was that was my goal, man. That was my thing. I, I always wanted to just disrupt the offenses. And what better way to disrupt the offenses by just eliminating them from doing what they wanted to do? I, everybody in the gym knew where the ball was going. Right. It, was just taking, it was just taking the risk and, and having some guys behind you that had your back, you know, yeah. that, that you could recover if you didn't get the steal. But, you know, more importantly, I, I just really think that it was just the time uh, of us watching the tapes and just, you know, studying other teams, man. But I always wanted to just go out and just disrupt, you know, the uh, the opponent's offense. 
Yeah, yeah, I, I tell you what, you definitely make a good point about that back line. I knew I had Cedric Lewis behind me, so I was oh, aggressive as hell trying to get still. <laughs> so I knew I knew Cedric was blocking everything. You yes. Know? He, he, he was taking up he was taking up for two back there. Absolutely, man. Yeah. <laughs> yes. yes. So, so what was it like for you, you know, personally playing for Gary and having a lot of success? You know, you the, you don't know anything about coming off the bench, man. You started from day one right into that five four year starter. You know, what was that like for you? It, it, it was it was good, but I mean, once again, well, that that you know, I'm I'm co telling off of you, bro. You know what I'm saying? You 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 took the commitment to stay at the university to to recruit the guys like myself, right? Yeah. So it, it was a it was a really big thing. And and man, I'm telling you, like these guys today don't know what it's like to have that passion to put the put this Merlin jersey on, you know? Like we 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 were the guys that man, we would run through brick walls for the yeah. University of Maryland, you know? And it, it was just something that we all wanted so bad to just turn this program ar around. And like I said, we all we all just left and you know picked up off of your coattail from what you did for the program. And then as as an opportunity for us to come in as freshmen, the sanctions were over, and this was a time for you know the rebuild and, and and just take this thing somewhere else. So it, it was just a great experience to you know just just go from a program that was you know. Uh, above water, but then we submerged out of the water. So it, it was just great, man, just, just to be a part of it. Yeah, you know, it was some tough times back then. And, and you yeah. guys, you were the first squad that really, you know, uh, could get your head above water and just kind of step out there and play free. You know, we were under this cloud, you right. know, and things, man. So just being able to weather that storm, create that ground floor for you guys. And, and man, y'all just, y'all took it and just ran with it like crazy. So that's that's great that, you know, that brings me to my next point. What, what's your thoughts on, you know, the current situation at University uh, of Maryland with uh, Turgeon's uh, departure? Well, um, you know, I, that era is over, Wiz, and, and, and now it's time to move forward and, 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 and look towards the, the new era. You know, I, I think that, you know, we as a program, we, we, we have to, 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 to bring the, the narrow this gap. I think for some years, I think we, we kind of, you know, we were, we were apart. And I think it's time for, for everybody to just to, to, to come on back in. It, it's just like, you know, that era right there that we were just talking about when you left and then we came in. It's like, it's, it's, it's time for another rebirth. But I, I think more importantly, we really have to get some of our, our Maryland staff, our Maryland, our former Maryland alumni on, on the benches um, and just throughout our whole program, man. I, I mean, you know, like Maryland is, is one of the founders of, 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 of the ACC and we're, we're a basketball, we're a basketball program. So, you know, we, we have to definitely take advantage of the recruitment here locally, DC, Baltimore, and, and stop letting the, the, the guys leave this area and, and bring them back home. But it all starts with, with guys like myself and yourself and, and, and bring all of us back together, man. We, we, you know, when, 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 when I was, when we were there, we always had the midnight madnesses and, and, and things that brought us together. But once that, once that ended, it seemed like we, we kind of separated and we weren't amongst each other and, and we weren't amongst each other at the games and all of that kind of stuff. So, you know, I, I just think that we, it's just time for us to, you know, it's this time for a new rebirth and, and hopefully we'll have some Maryland alumni on that bench. And namely, you know, you should put your name in the hat, man, because we can use you, bro. You know, so... Yes, yes. <laughs> I mean, when you think about it, man, you know, what, what better fit would it be for, you know, a, a former alumni to be on the bench? When you look at all of these successful programs throughout the, the country, just look at the bench. When University of Maryland won the championship, look at the bench. So it is very, very important that we start bringing back our own guys because nobody knows the program like your own. Fantastic. I feel you on that, man. So, you know, let's move forward to what you got going on now. You know, tell me a little bit about Rolls Construction and, and the can roll off dumpster. Oh man, so let me tell you, man, transition, bro. You you know, yeah. we, we, we yeah. go from dribbling a basketball for most of our lives and then, you know, it's the real world. So um, what ended up happening was, um, you know, I ended up uh, buying a, a property some years back and, you know, I had to redo the, I had to renovate the property. And I was like, you know what, this is my new niche. 
And you know, it was something about the sawdust, Wiz. It was like, you know what? This is this is gonna be my new passion, man. And I created uh, Rose Construction in 2003, and um, you know, we're a minority business, and we we specialize in Division Nine, which is mostly finished work. And um, you know, as a means of uh, just just establishing relationships with with all of uh, the the general contractors out here, I, I just got you know came to a point in in my in my career where I was like you know what I wanted to try to figure out how I could specialize in something that was easy you know more self-contained business and that's how I came up with the can roll-off dumpster so it it, it was just you know it, it just really umbrella up under the rose construction because I had the the contacts I had the resources and you know it was just a matter of me just uh taking that that and and, and running with the with the uh the people that I already had established myself with. Man, that's awesome. That's awesome. That's that's just great to see you transition like that and and, and being successful, man. So, you know, uh I just wanted to make sure we talked about that so everybody can understand what you got going on down and support, man. And and we, I appreciate you so much, man. And yeah. golly, man, you have no idea what it feels like to be sitting in front of them. <laughs> so I got one more question for you, Johnny. Yes, sir. You know, yes, you sir. Know, my, my listeners love to hear this one right here. So tell me something about you that, you know, most don't know. What you got for me? Man, let me just say this, man. I, I have a heart of gold, man. And I, I just really, I really believe that my purpose here was to go through, you know, the adversity in a younger point of my life and, and now be able to turn a chapter and, and know that there's another side. And that's what I want to do, man. I just want to give back to those that, that, are, that are in the situations that I was in, you know, back in, in my earlier days, man. I just want to give back, man. That's, that's it, bro. This is the AJ, look. I appreciate you so much, man. You already know since day one, man. You always been like a little brother to me, man. Yeah, so much love for you, bro. Hey, man, I was just saying, oh, hey, I have nothing but but the same to say about you, man. Yes, nothing man, but man. love. Hey, I appreciate you. I love you. You already know, and and, <laughs> and, and thank you for allowing me to be on your show, man. It, it means so much to me, and I love you, man. And tell the family and everybody that I love them too. Okay, bro. Absolutely, bro. I appreciate you so much, man. I'll see you soon. All right, man. Take care. Be safe. Yes. All right. To host a fan show or appear as a fan on a fan show, create a profile in Fan Media Network. Then look for the news page in our website and fan show resources page. Help yourself. We give show hosts a show graphic and team colors, a simple short show format, tips on pre and post production, ideas to get fans and guests on your show, Apple News distribution and show sponsorship sales and services to help featured show hosts earn money. Show hosts use our iPhone app to publish their shows. Our website supports Android users.